Dr. Quinn, thank you. What are the trends that we're seeing right now among Americans with these latest illnesses? Right now, the, the numbers are up. The cases are up. I mean, we're seeing a lot of patients that are coming into our personal clinic right here in Mississippi with positive test results. They're testing positive. A lot of them are having COVID, the flu, some are having RSV. And it's something that we really want to really let the public know about because the deal is right now there's a big concern in the medical community that people are not getting vaccinated. Vaccination rates are really down and the research has shown that these vaccines work. But also note that there's also a change in the, the, the way people are viewing these infections. I mean, a lot of people are getting sick and they're reporting that individuals are going to work. They're going to parties and they're just out of about spreading it and, and it's very dangerous and we want to encourage everybody if you're sick don't go to work go get tested go visit your medical doctor and know that there are a lot of effective treatments and 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 lastly if you're someone that's immunocompromised meaning you're greater than 65 years old or you have chronic medical conditions consider restarting those mitigative measures such as wearing masks social distancing and definitely, if you have any symptoms, go get tested and get that treatment because it can be very deadly. Right. Wash your hands, cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze, and stay home if you're sick. The other thing uh, that I always think about is cold weather and the impact on our sicknesses. For years, it's gone hand in hand, right? Don't go outside with a wet head of hair after you've been in the shower. I went out with my daughter this week, and she wasn't wearing a coat. And I'm like, you're going to get sick. You're not wearing a coat. Are they connected, or is this an old wives' tale about being out and not preparing for cold weather? Man, I get this every year for the last 20 years of being a doctor. Maybe a, a mom or a grandmother, she'll say, tell, tell my husband if he goes out in the cold without a coat, that's going to cause him to get a cold or an upper respiratory tract infection. And, and it is true that there's a higher prevalence of individuals contracting these infections during the colder weather, but it's not because of the cold weather alone. I mean, you have to be exposed to the actual infectious agents such as the RSV or the flu or most commonly rhinovirus, which causes the common cold. But it is true that the cold weather can contribute to you having a higher probability of getting sick. Uh, some of those reasons are when it's cold, we tend to congregate indoors with little ventilation, which, which makes it so we're more susceptible and vulnerable to the spread of these germs. But also it's been documented in the research, when it's cold, our nasal passages, we have mechanisms such as the, the hair and the mucus that help to protect us. But when it's cold outside, it doesn't work as well. And also those blood vessels underneath our skin constrict to push the, the blood down to keep it warm. But that limits the white blood cells or the part of our immune system that helps to fight it off. And then lastly, the research has also shown that the viral particles, they, they're able to sustain longer in the air when it's cold and dry and less sunlight, which is more prevalent during these winter months. So the, the winter cold doesn't cause you to get sick, but it makes you more vulnerable. Because I put a coat and hat on, you're going to get a pneumonia. All right. Thanks for clearing that up. Uh, lastly, uh, the new year leads a lot of people to eat healthier, try different diets. It's a resolution. How about these plant-based diets? Um, since you've got expertise in obesity, is this worth the hype? You know, I get that question every year as well. But the deal is the New Year's resolution. I'm going to get healthier. I'm going to lose the weight. And what I advise my patients to do is not do anything drastic. Because if you do something drastic, it's hard to sustain. But better a moderation. And I actually, my, me and my wife, we do the plant-based diet. And the plant-based diet doesn't mean no meat. It just means a, a diet that has a higher consistency of plants. An example would be a patient that would say, we're going to have chicken for dinner. Instead of having the drumstick and the breast, maybe just have the drumstick and then replace the breast with a lot of vegetables, like maybe some carrots, some broccoli, maybe some, some beans, more plant-based. And the research has shown that these plant-based diets uh, decrease uh, cardiovascular events, uh, decrease the probability of developing diabetes, or if you have diabetes, better controlled, and just overall helps you have better health. Mm, moderation. I feel like I've, I've heard that before, Dr. Quinn. Uh, thank you, as always, and Happy New Year to you. Hey, Happy New Year to you, and thank you for having me. Always.